Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about the right NAS for students. Okay, so first things first, I apologise in advance. You are going to hear the word backup so many times in this video, you are going to hate me. I'm so sorry, but there's no way to avoid it. One of the big reasons that you, Mr. Student, you, Mr. Pupil, you, Mr. College Grad, should be looking at a NAS is quite simply because of backups. You have no conception how annoying it is to lose your data. You think you do, but you don't. So many of you out there are creating dissertations spanning in the tens of thousands of words, hundreds of thousands. Some of you are producing project work with you and your peers and your groups, trying to meet all of these expectations and trying to get all of this work done within your three to five year period. That data is important, not only because it represents your education and represents your passing grade when you hand it in, but moreover, because if you lose it, you are going to be devastated. Now maybe you can use data recovery services to try and retrieve that information, or put simply, you've lost it in a way that it is just damn near irretrievable. Actual theft, actual loss, fire, water and more. And that's one of the reasons that you should invest in a NAS. Yes, most college and university campuses do provide cloud backup and network backup services, but these are very, very slow. These can work out very expensive because a lot of them have um, subscription fees once you go over a certain limit and moreover, they are just as fallible as anywhere else, and I'm sure they've got backups, but it never hurts to have more than one safety net. Now, a lot of the analysis we're going to talk about today are geared towards different users, and I've tried to bunch them all together in little groups, but if you're looking for the far more readable and digestible version of this video, I'll tell you right now, go to the comments. There's a link to the article I've written about all of the analysis we're talking about today and their pros and their cons and why you should pick some over the other. It covers everything. It covers price, speed, energy consumption, size, the works. And to make sure you get the right NAS for your needs, if you do want to have a more detailed version of this video, do go to that link in the comments. But without further ado, let's get our hands dirty with some NAS. Now, so many of us have got a horror story where we've lost our data. I, I personally have a story of one in a bar in, in Kingston called The Mill, and I had a pint, I spilt a pint over my laptop and lost three months of work. That was many, many years ago, and I'm still burnt up about it. I think one of the main reasons I exist on this channel is because of that incident and not making a backup of that data. There we go, backup twice. Um, now, yes, you can use third-party cloud services and you can use university cloud services, but a NAS will not just back up your data to a private area that only you and people you give credentials to can access in your dorm room. You can plug in a little NAS there, tie it. But also on top of that, you can synchronize it with cloud services as well. So it doesn't stop you using Dropbox, Google Drive, and indeed your university cloud. You just need to have their address, their actual online address, the URL, etc., and then get that plugged into the NAS and it will synchronize with that cloud. So don't worry, your backup can still work in multiple locations. On top of that, a NAS has USB ports that you can connect to USB drive to. The re utility of this is one, you can back up the contents of that NAS onto another drive to back up from, which I know sounds mental, or you can connect an external drive that you take to university college, to lectures, to whatever, and then bring it home each day, plug it into the NAS, and a number of NASs literally have a button, click that button, and it will back up the contents of that drive. And you can create multiple daily backups that are all independent, or back up the same folder where it just backs up the files that have changed. That is included in almost all NAS devices with a USB port. Finally, NASes have something called RAID, Redundant Array of Independent Disks. And what that is, is the ability to have multiple drives in one device, but if one of those drives dies, you don't lose all of your data. So RAID will combine all of the data available, all the drives, into one visible volume. And depending on which RAID you go for, do check out my video on RAID, it will give you a certain amount of overall capacity and or speed. But moreover, if one of those drives dies due to mechanical failure, you know, nothing's infallible. If one of those dies, your data can be recovered. And again, by recovery, I don't mean spending 10 to 15,000 pounds at data recovery centers. I mean sticking in a new drive that costs 50 quid and then just reboot the device and then it rebuild all of your data. Now, it should, you know, I'm gonna to appeal definitely to a certain kind of student here. There are a number of ways in which you can maximize your investment in this NAS. If you've got a three year course, you can get a NAS for as little as a hundred pounds that will cover you for those three years. 
just don't go to the bar for a few nights. Just knock that on the head and you can use the money towards a new NAS. But moreover, some NASs give you the ability to actually make money, to claim some of that money back. And that's something I'm sure a number of you just went, what? What? Now, so first and foremost, one, you can use the NAS to back up all of your mobile phone, your laptop devices automatically. So they can all have a little client application that's completely for free. And again, QNAP, Synology, WD, all of these, and Drobo, they've all got a mobile and desktop application that you can install, set a time period, and then say at 1 a.m. if your device is on, or midday to be safe, these devices will back up over the network or the internet to your NAS. So if you lose your device when you're out and about, you've got a backup in place. Moreover, you can stream movies from a NAS device. So if you do have your own dorm room or whatever, or your own university halls, room, um, residence, you've got your room there, you've got your NAS set up, not only will it back up everything, you can fill it with all your TV shows, your music, your photos, your whatever, and stream them to your DLNA devices. And once again, you can pick up a NAS for as little as 100 quid. Lastly, you can attach IP cameras to your room in case you're worried about invasions, burglars, security concerns. And you can get a simple camera, even a USB one for uh, QNAT cameras, and have that IP camera in your room that just sits there. And when you're not in the room, if anything happens or there's a break in, you can see it. And again, for the people that are just about to go to uni, once again, for the sake of a hundred pounds, you can have this thing in your room with a camera that only activates when you're not in the room, or you can set that up. So if you walk away from the moon, something called smart home, where it's connected to your phone, and if you leave the room, go a certain distance from the device, the camera kicks in, and you'll never have to worry about setting it up, and you'll get mobile phone alerts if someone goes into your room via motion detection and more. Now, moving away from that, here's the ways in which you can make a little bit of money. One, you can run a file server for people. So if you've got files that need to be distributed to people, files that need to be downloaded, you can create your very own download server. And if you want, it's up to you, make sure you own the files. You can arrange a pay per download system for people. Two, you can run the NAS as an exchange server of emails, files, and teamwork. So if you've got a team working on a project that you want to keep it hush hush, you can get everyone to chip in a few quid for the electricity, call it what you want, and have that download and exchange server for the rest of your group and team members if you're working on a project together. You can run a VPN through a NAS. So if you've got a VPN uh, provider, you pick one, like uh, Viper or something like that, that gives you a bunch of licenses to use, you can install a, a VPN server on your NAS. It's two clicks to install the app. And once you've logged in your VPN there, you can say to people, if you want to use my virtual private network, my VPN, that gives them complete anonymity to download and go to wherever they want without being tracked. They can access your NAS and use the VPN. And you can charge people for that if you so choose. But again, that's up to you how and when you choose. Lastly, you can create just a file server. So if you want people to be able to store and have their own backups, you can create a quota and login system on your NAS, whereby you can say you've got a friend in your classroom called Jeremy. And Jeremy, you can say, do you know what, Jeremy? I've got a few um, terabyte hard drives in this. How about, do you want 100 gig of online easy access storage and charge him whatever you want? Don't go crazy, it's not that much. And with that, you can give him login credentials, you can give him two-step verification, you can give him access 24 seven to his files. So again, a NAS can be used to make money, save you money, and more importantly, save your data. Which brings me to the guts of this video. Which should you buy? Because there are quite literally thousands of NASs, tens of thousands even, and it's so hard to pick the right one within your budget and means. So, straight away, if budget is your concern, you're wondering what is the, most, the best budget NAS for university and college, first place, the DS-119J. It's coming out soon. Currently, you can get the 115J. And this is a one bay that's going to retail for about 100 to 120 quid. It's got a great little CPU inside there, the 119J. It's a dual-core ARM. It hasn't got much memory, but it will definitely do the job, and it can install one hard drive. Next up, you've got the QNAP TS-228A. Now, once again, do go to the comments where all of these NAS are listed with their respective prices, hardware, and how they compare. And the TS-228A, Better hardware, two hard drives. Finally, WD MyCloud, a much more recognizable name. And that one 
is the WD MyCloud EX2. This retails for about 130 to 150 pounds, most expensive of the three, but it comes with three years of manufacturer's warranty and you can buy it with hard drives pre-installed. So those are the best budget NASes out there. But what if you want something that's a lot more reliable, a little bit more all-rounder, something where you're gonna get the speed and integrity and access and not worry too much about cutting corners too much. Well, these retail for about three to 500, maybe even 600 pounds, these ones. All the previous ones we talked about were between one and 150 pounds. With these, uh, these are pretty mainstream NASs. The DS918 from Synology, a great NAS that covers all the bases beautifully. Uh, from QNAP, the TS453B, E, which is another four bay NAS there that leans a lot more into uh, virtual machines and multimedia but still uses very similar hardware to that of the 918. Uh, and finally another WD, the WD MyCloud Pro and as we talk about this channel a lot because it is a bloody sturdy NAS device. It does use a little bit more power than the other two but in every other regard with a longer warranty uh, better software in some regards, in terms of individual third party or for software support, I should say, Plex and Milestone surveillance. But those three are pretty much the most reliable three NASs you can buy right now. And all three of them uh, have four hard drive bays. So you can install up to four hard drives, just the one, or add as you go, and they'll be RAID protected, and you've got cloud support, surveillance, Plex, the works. Now, for those that are interested in power, They've got this um, you know, university or college loan. They've got a bit of money to burn and they want to make sure they buy something that's going to last the entire course, the entire three or five year period. And you want something powerful. You want something that isn't just for backing up a multimedia. You want to use this to actually work on. You want to edit files live on this device where possible. And for those, I would recommend the following. These all retail for about a grand. Okay, so these are around a thousand flat out. So we have really leapt up from that 100 quid we talked about earlier on. And these are the QNAP, um, technically six bay, but it's a four bay device, the TBS 682. It's got an Intel i3 based CPU inside, and it's a dual core with eight gig of DDR4 memory, and it's got everything. It's got HDMI support, it's got that seventh gen Intel based CPU. It's got SSD caching with SSD bays on the front and M2 SSD bays inside. It's got a remote control, and it's got a great CPU and PCIe expansion ports on the rear, so you can add 10 gigabit Ethernet and more. And if you don't know what a number of the things I've just said are, stop watching now and go for the other six analysis that we just talked about. Or alternatively, head down to the, the link in the description to the article which explains a lot of these things more. Otherwise, this video is going to be 30, 40 minutes of your time that you ain't going to get back. Next up is the Synology DS3018XS. It's a six bay NAS that arrives with a dual, um, an Intel Pentium CPU inside, Pentium D. It's a dual core, and again, eight gig of DDR4 memory. It's got a PCIe upgrade slot for 10 GB again, and it's definitely a solid device. It arrives with uh, five years of manufacturer's warranty and a Synology replacement service, which means if there's a fault with this device and it, you know, there's a hardware fault, they will replace the unit next day as long as you're living in one of the regions of the world they cover, which is a lot. Um, so that's a great five year peace of mind, but that one's about 1200 quid. It's not the cheapest. Um, the cheapest one of the three, however, I'm not gonna say it's the most powerful, is the Synology DS1517 Plus. Now this is about six, 700 quid. This is a big, big dip down. It's a five bay NAS, it's got a quad core Intel Atom, four LAN ports and a PCI Express slot, uh, slot for 10 GBE. It's definitely the most modest powered of these three. It's still more powerful than the other ones we've talked about so far. There's still no denying that of the three we're talking about now, it's the least powerful, but it is powerful yet affordable. So you have to make that leverage. And again, link, comments, where to buy, etc. Finally, ultimate NASs. These are for people that want to buy something that's gonna last five, six, seven and years and more, and maybe even up to 10. These are the NAS devices that will keep you in good stead for a very, very long time. These are ones you aren't just thinking about uni. These are a solid investment that you want to carry forward for your data. And if you're someone that's looking to make money, these could well be the devices to look at to make sure you don't lose any speed or bandwidth when you've got multiple users connecting. So first and foremost, first one, the TS-877. It's the Ryzen 7 based CPU NAS, and it's got an insane CPU inside. There's also a good depth of different CPUs and RAM options for you to go for, which means that you can 
kind of accommodate your budget accordingly towards RAM and CPU. You can get it even as low as 1800 but in the majority of cases you're looking at two to two and a half grand of money spent there. Um, next, probably my favourite NAS in the entire list if I'm honest. It is powerful, it is expensive, but it's still the best. The DS3617XS. Five years of manufacturer's warranty, three, um, three years of Synology's replacement service in case there's a fault. It's got a quad core Xeon CPU, 60 gig of DDR4 memory, 12 hard drive bays, an insane amount of storage, and PCIe upgrade slots to 10 GBE. It does everything. This played any codec I threw at it in Plex and natively in 1080p and 4K. It can run multiple VMs, it can run multiple backups, and it takes a hell of a lot to challenge this NAS. Don't get me wrong, it's the biggest of all of them and it will make a little bit more noise. It will be a pain in the ass if it's in the corner of your room fanning away. But still no denying it is a powerhouse of a NAS. And for those looking for a more serious investment NAS, that's the one for you. And finally, we can look at the TVS 673E. And the TVS 673E, again, a little bit more affordable. We brought it back to about 12, 1300. And this is a six bay NAS that's got a USB direct access port on the front so you can real-time access your data, not worry about on the network and internet. It's got HDMI 2.0, it's got PCIe upgrade slots, and it's got modest spec compared with the other two units. A quad-core AMD CPU, very graphically enabled. It's got a Radeon R6 um, embedded component on the CPU, as well as up to 64 gig of DDR4 memory, or as low as 8, depending how you feel, and a remote control included too. So that's the one for the investment that wants a bit more multimedia, but remember, the most powerhouse one of them all is that Synology, the DS3617XS. Now, I've been talking for a long time. Maybe some of you stuck around till the end. If you did, well done, let me know in the comments. But please, please, please visit that article in the description. It will give you more, far more information and it is far more digestible than this video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to learn more about the right nows for you. And if you do have a question, let me know in the comments. Buy your NAS from the guys at Span.com. And finally, subscribe to NASCompares.com to stay abreast of all the new releases, all the new fixes and updates and tricks with your NAS. Thank you so much for watching.